So I grew up in Kings County in a rural community uh, called St. Teresa's. Uh, my mom and my dad separated when I was pretty small. My dad suffered with a lot of mental illness and addictions issues which ultimately led to their separation. I didn't realize it at the time but I you know had very low self-esteem, very low self-worth and eventually I turned to addiction. So I was always trying to fill a void, I guess you could say. The first time I had a drink, I was uh, 12 years old and I immediately became like a binge drinker and a blackout drinker at that age. I didn't mean to get to the state I was getting to, but I couldn't control it once I started. And then I had a very traumatic event happen when I was 15 years old. My father, you know, he had been sick with, with his addiction as well and mental illness and we got a call that he had died by suicide. That hugely impacted my life going forward and my addiction. After my father passed, I ended up in and out of hospital on accidental overdoses and with panic attacks. I can remember being in hospital and just thinking I was bad, not understanding that I was sick. I think the first time I ever, ever ended up in treatment for addiction was at the age of 18. I went to Mount Herbert and I went to detox, but even at that point, I wasn't ready to give up everything. You know, I thought if I could just do less or if I could just manage my addiction. And, and I learned the hard way that that's not how it works. After numerous attempts at recovery and numerous different programs, I realized like I couldn't, I couldn't get clean and sober for, for anyone else. You know, as much as my family, you know, prayed for me to get well and begged for me to get well and I wanted to make them happy, doing it for somebody else was never just quite enough. You know, I always would go back out there because I wasn't happy within. If I'm thinking back to five years ago, I got to a place where I was so desperate to get well and I was so tired of hurting. It was either get well or die at that point. There were a lot of challenges uh, in recovery. You know, early recovery is really tough. You know, you just kind of make it through day by day, minute by minute, you know, grasping at whatever you can to stay clean. The challenges kind of never go away, but they get easier to kind of ride through them. So very, very early on into my recovery, uh, I became pregnant with my son, Sawyer. He was born a day before my, my one year anniversary for, for my own recovery. He's my miracle. If it wasn't for him, I don't know if I would have made it through. So my life today is, pr is pretty regular, you know. I, I work a full-time job. I work uh, as a peer support worker for Canadian Mental Health, PEI Division. So that's kind of a dream come true to take kind of all that struggle and all that pain and, and use it for something positive. I think, you know, if there's anyone out there struggling today that is watching this, I would just like to tell them that they are not alone. I was hopeless. I was that hopeless addict that people thought, she is never going to get it. She is never going to get this. And I proved them all wrong. You know, I'm here today. No matter how many times you fall down, no matter how many setbacks you have, just keep on trying because, you know, one of those times you will get it.